that some people already happy friday it's friday it's kevin it's live from lockdown thanks for joining me already nice to have you with me nice to be here this is locked live from lockdown number 30 i don't know how to do that 30 times i've done this by the end of this uh my almost weekly live stream coming from my now somewhat nomadic uh live from lockdown studio uh, which yet again sits on the traditional territory of the Wendat and Anishinaabek nations, the people of the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, the Mississaugas of the New Credit, and the Métis Nation. And it's those First Nations that have kept this land uh, sacred and safe and whole since time immemorial. And it's their enduring hospitality and generosity that makes it possible for the likes of me to be here. And I am eternally grateful for that. So yet again, an hour of words and music, first and foremost dedicated to the spirit of justice and reconciliation with the first peoples of this land. Thanks. And speaking of hospitality, I want to again say a very special thanks to my new hosts uh, for, of the live, the, my new hosts of the live from lockdown studio. Uh, I'm here in a place called Rat Space, uh, rehearsal and recording, uh, and its owner Robin Easton, Robin and his partner Rebecca Campbell have been inordinately generous and gracious as hosts, helping me set my studio up here come here and practice every day, do my teaching and my shows from here, and they have been uh, really fantastic. This is a wonderful place. If you're a music maker or a video maker uh, and you want a space that's going to be set up safe from COVID and a good place to work or shoot a video or rehearse, it's very well equipped and a really wonderful place, and I really encourage you to support them because times are tough for businesses like this, and it's mighty slow around here. Uh, so um, give them a call. Check the notes on the side of the page. Uh, the Facebook page there, and uh, you'll see how to contact them. They're not Facebook people, Robin and Rebecca and Ratspace, but they do have a great website, and Robin responds to his emails and his phone calls very quickly. So um, give them a call. Book something. Yeah, hope you can. That was Georgia off the top. Georgia on my mind. Ain't Georgia on my mind and any number of places in the United States of America. I believe that Georgia is still in the midst of a recount. Georgia might be a state that voted Democrat for the first time since 1992. Hard to know, but um, I'd like to send that out to all the people struggling to bring some democracy to the United States of America against insurmountable odds. Uh, so I thought it was time to, to bring out Georgia again. I've done that once or twice on the show, but uh, thanks for that. And I'm going to check, and look at that. Look, I got lots of friends there. Things are, um, things are working. No urgent text saying you can't hear me, so I'm glad about that. Man, I'll say more about this, but I did a show yesterday that had a lot of technical trouble, and I was a little worried again this afternoon that something was going to go wrong, but it seems to be okay. Uh, I'm going to do a bunch of repeats this week. This is another one that I've played once or twice before, um, a piece written by Roddy Elias, who's a fantastic guitarist and composer based in Ottawa, Canada. Uh, probably my most influential music teacher in my entire life. I studied guitar with Roddy for a number of years and he's still a very good friend. And every time I hear him play or every time I speak to him, I learn something new. So um, I'd like to send this out to Roddy and to music teachers everywhere. Um, all of us, I do a bit of teaching myself and we've all had to reinvent, entirely reinvent what we do in the time of this pandemic. Uh, whether it's teaching online, on computers. Uh, I've got a friend who's... Um, teaching bass lessons through the window, through a window <laughs> these days. Uh, however we manage to do it, uh, kudos to everyone who's trying to keep, uh, keep music going, keep music education alive in this near impossible time. So here is a beautiful composition, and beautiful, I should say, and challenging composition by the great Roddy Elias, uh, A Night for Stars.
A Night for Stars by the wonderful Roddy Elias. Thank you very much for listening to that. Thanks to all of you sending me comments that I promise to read later, but I can't distract myself now or I'll never get through this. So, uh, yeah, thanks so much. <clears throat> uh, more on the theme of it's a rough time in the pandemic. I will remind you, as I do every week, that uh, if you have an income, if you have an income and if you can afford to support live music, those of us who are doing this and try to keep keep um, keep our careers alive are really appreciative of the support. I've been very, uh, very lucky to have a lot of generous supporters and I want to thank you again and again uh, for the donations, big and small, that you send my way. If you're able to do that, check the links on the side of the page. There's a PayPal account and a Ko-Fi account and if you're in Canada, you can even just send me an e-transfer. My email address and my phone number are along the bottom of the screen there, as well as over there. Uh, check that out if you can, and no pressure. If you can't, or if you're supporting some other people, and that's where your money's going, that's just fine. I'm mostly here to hope that you can enjoy some art on a Friday afternoon or evening, depending on where you are. But thanks again for all your generous support. I want to say a special thanks on the subject of a musician's trying to do this to um, Mike Kearney and the gang at Stream Cycle. Uh, I had the pleasure of being part of a show yesterday, again, I've done a few shows with Stream Cycle. We did one yesterday called Ruby Cycle, which brought together a bunch of the great singer-songwriters who perform on the Ruby Tuesday live session. Again, on the notes on the side of the page, there's links to Stream Cycle and to Ruby Tuesdays. Uh, Ruby Tuesdays coordinated by Roscoe Galloway, another great singer-songwriter. We had a really fantastic show, technically very challenging uh, in the lead up, but a really, really fun show. It's made for a busy week uh, for me, getting ready for that. And so I'm doing a bunch of repeats. I'm doing some new tunes this week, but also a bunch of repeats. And I hope you don't mind if you watch every week, you'll recognize a few, uh, few pieces. And I've had a number of requests which are in the queue, but I may not get to this week. I will thank you again for those of you who keep sending me requests. Uh, the second wave is here. Live from Lockdown is going to continue for a while, and I need lots of repertoire ideas. So keep them coming, and uh, be patient. I will try to keep learning new tunes and working them in. I sent a note to my friend Judy Shand uh, this afternoon, to, or last night, I guess, to say um, she's got a, several, several requests again in the queue. She's great for keeping them going, and they're all tunes I don't know, so no time this week, but maybe next. Here's one I played before, but not in a while. Um, Playing my nylon string guitar, I try to work in a bossa nova whenever I can. And this is, uh, man, I'll work in a bossa nova I can on my nylon string guitar with a fingernail problem. Excuse me while I fix that. This is one of the better known tunes by the wonderful Antonio Carlos Jobim, one of the fathers, perhaps the father of the bossa nova movement. And this is a tune that I love to play. And his Portuguese name is Corcovado. And the English lyrics, which I believe Jean Lees wrote, uh, tr translate the title into Quiet Nights of Quiet Stars. May you have a quiet night with quiet stars.
Corcovado, Quiet Nights of Quiet Stars. Thank you very much for listening to that. Hope you liked it. A little bit of Brazilian music for, uh, I don't know how it is for you. It should be a chilly autumn afternoon, although I have to say Toronto's having a crazy spat of almost summer-like weather. 19 degrees high for two days in a row. So, not quite Brazilian weather, but uh, nice and warm. No, uh, no complaints. We'll keep rolling. Birthday wishes time. I try once when I can to wish happy birthdays. There's two special ones this week. I mean, there's many special birthdays this week, I'm sure, and I'm sure there's lots I'm forgetting. But I want to say a couple of very special happy birthdays. First and foremost, um, probably the most important birthday in my life, and that is that of my son, Caleb who I've spoken about a bit. Uh, Caleb's not a Facebook guy and not even living somewhere that has internet access these days, so I don't expect he's watching. But Caleb's birthday was on Sunday. Caleb turned 19, and um, I want to wish him a very, very happy birthday. Caleb's an organic farmer, 
and an activist and a thinker and the most inspiring human that I know. And as a father, that's a mighty privileged place to be, to be able to say something like that about my son. And it's true, and I've been saying it for a number of years, and it's still true. So, um, Caleb, wherever you are this afternoon, I imagine you've finished your shift on the fields, and sometimes the crew has a bit of a relaxing time on Friday afternoon. I hope you've had a great birthday week. I miss you a lot. Can't visit you. Caleb's in the province of Quebec, and we're uh, trying not to travel. I was hoping to go see him last weekend, but there was no doing that. So, anyway, happy birthday to Caleb. A good friend of mine from Edinburgh by the name of Peter Tumeyer also had a birthday this week. His birthday, I think, was on Wednesday, and I don't know if he's listening. I know some people in his household might be listening. Um, Peter's a great guy, and uh, I hope he had a great birthday. Amongst many other things we could say about Peter, he's a good friend, and he's a mandolin player. So he's a much better mandolin player than me, and I wanted to, nonetheless, to try my hand my weekly attempt to make sense of this instrument and play a mandolin tune for him. Uh, I can't wait to get to Edinburgh and get a mandolin lesson or two from Peter. I'm sure he's got some things to show me. So uh, in the meantime, I'll make my attempt. And uh, again, in, this, in uh, my plan this week of playing tunes I already know, I, uh, I went back through some hornpipes and traditional tunes I'd played and I chose the Peacemaker's Hornpipe because uh, I thought maybe I could get through it. We'll see how I do, and I um, want to dedicate this to Peter, and also because uh, if I think about people making peace in the world, I don't know anybody doing a better job than Caleb. So here's the Peacemaker's Hornpipe. In the key of G, Louise, if you're playing along, or anybody else with your mandolin.
you go, the Peacemaker's Hornpipe, or some version thereof. Probably slower and messier than it's supposed to be, but uh, there you go. Thanks for your patience as I work on this crazy little instrument. <clears throat> Ah. I don't know if you can hear the noise. One of the uh, realities about my new location is that there's a massive construction project across, this, across the street. And uh, last week I was an hour later and they'd, they'd uh, wrapped up for the day mostly by then, although it was traffic. But the trucks are out there uh, digging and hauling around and it's a bit noisy, but we do what we can. It's Bandcamp Friday. It's the first Friday of November, and so it's Bandcamp Friday. Bandcamp, I, I talk about it every week. A fantastic site and a great place to, uh, for musicians like me to sell music. If you want to buy independent music, please go to Bandcamp. Um, again, on the side of the page, you'll see the links to my music, but there's a whole bunch of great stuff there, and Bandcamp is a great organization. They really work to make sure that a decent proportion of the money you spend actually goes to the musicians, which you can't say for Apple, iTunes, and you certainly can't say for Spotify and other streaming services like that. You can buy albums digitally, you can get CDs delivered. Uh, check it out. Really worth checking out. Bandcamp, uh, yeah, bandcamp.com. Go there and search for Kevin Barrett Group or the Special Interest Group or your favorite musician. I'll bet you find lots of great stuff there. And while you're looking through those notes, again, you'll see my links. We can, um, you're interested in taking some guitar lessons, recording an album and having some guitar tracks, all those things we can do online, and I'm doing a lot of that these days. Please don't hesitate to get in touch. Another really cool thing that's happening this weekend is the Kensington Market Jazz Festival, the virtual Kensington Market Jazz Festival. Um, which I've been a part of for a number of years. I'm part of that neighborhood and still very active in the Kensington neighborhood in Toronto. And um, Molly Johnson and Celine Peterson do a fantastic job of putting a great festival together every year. Of course, um, the pandemic threw a bit of a curve in that, but that did not deter them. And uh, they did a bunch of recording in the summer. I spoke about this earlier in the year. Uh, Rebecca Campbell, a uh, fantastic singer, Rebecca Campbell and I did a little set which will be broadcast on Saturday evening, uh, this coming Saturday, the tomorrow night, the 7th of November. Uh, no, yeah, yeah, uh, 7th of November at 6.30 this time, Eastern Standard Time. Uh, but this, it's going on all weekend, Saturday and Sunday evening. Lots of great music. Again, the links are on the side of the page. Uh, please check that out. Please support that festival if you can. It's really, really worthwhile. And I sure hope that we get back to playing uh, in real venues with real live audiences next week, next year. Let's hope, eh? I'm gonna do... another tune. I often speak about my good friends uh, on this show, but I... and I'm a privileged man to have a bunch of good friends. I do not have a better friend than a guy by the name of Keith McNair who's been a friend for a very long time and, uh, and a wonderful support and a particularly wonderful support to me in recent months. Um, I could talk about Keith all night, but uh, in particular, he's also a fantastic songwriter and somebody whose music I haven't done. I told him this, he, he seemed a little perplexed, but I have to say that Keith's songs are amazing and dense and challenging and very thoughtful words and not overly complicated structures but complicated enough that I'm always a little intimidated by his songs but I decided it was time to put that away and to work on one so um, I'm gonna play a tune by the great Keith McNair this is one of my favorites on the huge body of work he's produced this is a tune called Forgiveness Waltz and uh, while I've played it, I actually played on the original recording of it, played some guitar, I've never sung it before and I just started working on it and I hope I get through. There's a lot of words, but I hope you like it. Ah, here's the forgiveness waltz. <laughs> grow so cold they are best left alone one freezes and another heart tears this is a love song we cling to there are minds made so small they don't wonder at all and their freedom from doubt 
says they've figured it out. So we follow their big bouncing balls. This is a lesson we sleep through. Are you sorry? Can you forgive me? Let all be forgiven through all of Lang Syne. And are you sorry? And you forgive me? We'll swear to be better next time. While the ocean tides rise, the orchards crack dry Landlords build homes with walls high on the hills And the orphans of the virus abide These are some fences we mended We wring our hands and pray As we lurch past the graves too many souls lost in so many holes And we choose who will be safe This is a judgment we render Are you sorry? Can you forgive me? That I'll be forgiven for Old Lang Syne, and if you're sorry, and you forgive me, we'll swear to be better next time. There are secrets I hold that will never be told, no, not even to you, though you might want me to. Sometimes some bits are best left unknown This is a meaning for lonesome And though I can't get this right Will you stay through the night Forgive what I can say And love me anyway When the ghosts come Will you hold me tight Are our hope for atonement Are you sorry? Can you forgive me? That I'll be forgiven for all Lang Syne And if you're sorry And you forgive me We'll swear to be better next time Forgiveness Waltz, with apologies to Keith for missing a couple of the chords there. Too much going through my brain. Anyway, thank you. Thank you for that. Thanks to Keith. I might, uh, I might pull that one out of the, uh, out of the closet again uh, in the not too distant future and see if I can uh, get better at it. Another person on my long list of thanks that I forgot to thank out loud last week is uh, another fabulous friend, Ola Weeb, Fiola Weeb, who lives in Bournemouth. He's a Canadian from, uh, from the Winnipeg area originally, but um, Ola and her partner Dave have been amazing supports, and I've spoken about them often. Uh, and again, I had a little thank you to Ola in the, in the notes on the side of the page last week and this week. Um, amongst other great ways that Ola and Dave continue to support this effort, Ola's a graphic designer, and um, she's been a bunch of help uh, making my setup look better. Um, that, that logo with my logo and my email address along the bottom of the screen, and if you caught the top of the show, my, my new little sign, that uh, so I don't have to have a physical sign in front of the camera, but uh, my digital signs at the front and top of the, sh at, of the show are uh, Ola's creations. She's the kind of person you call her up or you send her an email and you say, can you explain to me how I might do this? She just does it. 
it's in my inbox basically two minutes after I hit send. Just amazing. So I want to say a special thanks to Ola for her huge uh, and endless help with uh, design and file management and new images. Um, yeah, so many people helping out to keep uh, to keep me rolling these days. I can't uh, I can't thank them all enough. Here's another tune I've played before, although not in a while, uh, which is surprising. This is probably my very favorite piece of music in the canon of, uh, of jazz standards, or the American Songbook, as some people call it. Uh, a tune that I absolutely love, uh, a tune that I first learned by listening to Bill Evans play on the Village Vanguard recording. Um, it's a beautiful waltz um, that I, as I say, my favorite tune, done it a few times, but not recently. I uh, might send this out to my favorite Scottish singer, Susanna MacDonald, who does a beautiful job of it when we get a chance to play together. I hope we get to do that again someday. This is called Alice in Wonderland. <laughs>
Alice in Wonderland. There you go. Thanks for listening to that. Uh, that's a beautiful tune. I haven't played that in a long time. I still feel like I'm trying to figure it out. Uh, okay, quick message of love. One more tune. Time's passing. Time to wrap this up shortly. Uh, my message of love every week. My message of love this week, in keeping with happenings in the country to the south of me, two words, even less than my usual one. Democracy matters. That's what I got to say. Democracy matters. Now, you'd be hard-pressed to suggest that um, the electoral system or really anything in the United States of America is a particularly good example of democracy, even at the best of times, not an especially democratic system, without getting in too much into an analysis of the uh, electoral college and the way that's designed to uh, keep the vote away from the common people. But um, I just find it absolutely absurd. It's absurd the way the Trump campaign is attempting uh, to undermine and subvert the fairness of the election uh, while suggesting that other people are the ones perpetrating the fraud. Uh, it's really quite mind-boggling, the disconnection between reality and, uh, and, and rhetoric uh, at this point in this week. I played Georgia off the top because uh, there's recounts going there in a bunch of places. Who knows what's going to happen? I'm a little worried, to be honest. Uh, I think it's a scary time. I think things could unravel in terrible ways. I've been thinking a lot about these principles, which you probably can't read anymore. They used to be behind me. Didn't really have a way to hang them here. But uh, I got these principles of a just recovery that I've been talking about on and off all the way through this show. And looking at them and realizing that it really, each and every one of them has been undermined or ignored in the way the U.S. has or hasn't dealt with the U.S. administration, has or hasn't dealt with the pandemic uh, this year. It's really quite shameful, shameful if you ask me. Um, but, um, you know, particularly this one that says, put people's health and well-being first, no exceptions. It's the last thing that's happened in most of the United States. And um, I just wish, I wish better. For, my, for that country, for my friends and the people I don't know, and even the people I would not count as my friends in that country, I, I, uh, I wish no ill will, and I wish a saner and more responsible government to come out of this election. Let's hope we get there. I'm going to play one more tune. Already mostly filled up my hour. But I'm going to do my usual thing just to play a play a pop tune and, and uh, develop a loop and, and play that out for the rest of the show. Um, here's a tune that I just thought about playing uh, um, recently. It's, uh, it's a tune that I, I didn't really know. I, I became a bit of a jazz snob uh, in my youth and ignored a whole bunch of pop music and I feel like I'm still catching up as I get to be an old man. Um, but I was thinking back to uh, the place I often describe as my favorite pub, Sandy Bell's in Edinburgh, and the first time I ever played a session in there, which was truly a magical, magical day for me. Um, met a bunch of people that are still very important to me to this day, and it hopefully will be forever. Um, but uh, I had an amazing, amazing session four years ago and change in that place. And um, uh, the bartender who, uh, who has gone on to become my favorite Scottish singer, uh, taught me this tune because uh, it only has four chords. It was pretty simple to learn it on the spot. And we played that somewhere that afternoon at Sandy Bell's. And um, by the time it came around to the second chorus, the entire pub, which was jammed, was singing along. So it's a really fun memory for me and a tune I thought I'd put together for my loop out on today's Live from Lockdown. Uh, this is a tune by Radiohead, and it's called Creep. And I want to thank you for joining me, and I hope that you like it. And uh, I hope to see you next week.